Hello again, and thank you for tuning in to another Tale from the Table. I'm your host, Philly Dips, and today you may have noticed that, uh, that I have a new chair. Actually, well, that was in my Dunkirk thing, but I want to point it out, because, like, this is a really awesome chair, because if you watch my old videos, the chair is horribly squeaky, but, like, this makes, this makes no noise at all. It's, it's pretty awesome. Now, uh, first things first, I'm going to say all the words inside my head. Uh, some of those words include... I got my Fan Expo ticket. Don't look at the numbers. I got my Fan Expo ticket. I'm going on Friday. The Friday? Like, Fan Expo Canada, not the American one. I'm going on Friday. I got, you know, I got my map. And I'm very excited. I guess, uh, my head got cut off there. Uh, yes, I will be going with some of my friends, and I will be making a video covering it. So, you know, that's, that's very, that's exciting and all. Uh, you know, it's, it's not Gen Con you know, just a board game specialized thing, but still, it's, it's gonna be fun to cover it, I think. I think you, you like the video. So, uh, today's video is going to be discussing dungeon design, like, for DMs, uh, because, you know, the game is called Dungeons and Dragons, and, you know, it's a very, a very important part of the game. It's not the only place you can have a fight, but a lot of your fights are gonna end up at dungeons, unless, like, you're doing, like, an, uh, a, spe a more specialized campaign, like a ocean campaign or like a war campaign or something but a lot of the stuff's gonna be happening in dungeons so i've got you know a, a cue card here full of things to, to discuss about dungeons and uh so yeah let's jump right in so the first thing i want to i want to mention is that when it comes to designing dungeons maps are not necessary like for that like so, first of all, it depends on the edition you're playing. If you're like most people and you're playing 5th edition, then yeah, maps are not necessary. But also, like, when you're planning dungeon yourself, you know, you see, like, the classic example of, like, you know, people, they have, they have their pen and they have, like, their graph paper and they're, you know, drawing out the dungeon on the graph paper. You don't have to do that because all that really matters is that you know what, the, generally, what the rooms are and, you know, which, what order they're going to go in. Now, if you're making... A more you know complex dungeon maybe with multiple stories or you know multiple multiple paths to take as you go through the dungeon maybe it's a better idea to make a map but for the purpose of like you know if you're watching this video because you want us to make your first dungeon then it's generally not necessary to uh, make a, a map for just a, a very a small linear dungeon uh, a good example of a small of a of a, of a first time dungeon like a, a dungeon that uh, anyone could make is Cobalt Hall. I have it here. Hold on. Yeah, Co Cobalt Hall is a very good example of like a a low level dungeon because it's there's no choice in like the direction you take it's just it's it's simply you know it's, it's linear it's this this is the fourth edition uh, dungeon master's guide and you can see here like it's totally it's, it's totally linear you start in, in down here but you know it's interesting there's different kind of terrain there's you know different places to fight but for the most part it's uh it's it's it's, it's basic enough for beginners something else I want to talk about is uh, theme and context now Something important to understand is that there's no such thing as a dungeon historically. Like there's no structures were built as a dungeon before. Dungeons that you see in uh, in good D and D, in like you know the movies and stuff like that, they they used to be something else with purpose. Like they could maybe it's maybe it's a tomb, maybe it's like a it's like it's like you know. Uh, Maybe it's a tomb. Maybe it's you know a, a castle, a, a rundown castle. Maybe it's like you know a, a church, some kind of some kind of temple. Dungeon is a very is a very loose term in the sense that it only really describes like a like a structure in in which in which the fights happen. It doesn't have to be like you know. You know, cobblestone lined underground man man built cave. A dungeon could even be like you know, it, it could be like a ship that the, the players are raiding. It could be, it could be like you know, like a part of a forest that's overgrown in like an enclosed area. It could be, it could be like you know, the duke's mansion. It could. Dungeon is a very loose term describing a series of encounters 
that are challenging for the party. And you have to keep this in mind, because you can't just say, oh, there's a dungeon, it's, it's made of stone, and it's, you know, old and rotting. That, that doesn't make any sense. Who would, who would spend the money and the manpower and the time to build such a thing? Uh, and also, context is important, too. The key, if you're playing, like, a proper, like, a proper, like, some DMs, like, some D&D games are, like, you know, every session they enter a, a new dungeon, and that's about it, there's no plot, which is fine. That's a, that's a perfectly good, uh, campaign. Uh, old school, like, very old school, like, like, like early 70s D&D, like, I mean, like, post-chainmail, like, 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 pre-redbox D&D. Most of the games were just that. There was a dungeon of the week kind of thing. And every week they would explore your dungeon and there was no overarching story. There was no big bad evil guy. But if you're playing, you know, a more modern kind of D&D thing where, like, where there's a story and there are quests and things, then it's good to have context. You, so maybe, you know, this dungeon is the tomb of, of you know, the king of, of uh, Thardonia, which is the old elf kingdom that once, you know, spread far across the forest, but then was wiped out. And this is the tomb where the king was buried in the final hours of the kingdom before it collapsed into anarchy. Or, you know, uh, this, you know, th this is, the, you know, the, uh, the wicked duke's manor. And he, uh, he has raised liches from the ground to take over the world with, and they're all using his manor as sort of a home base, and you have to go in there and clear it out. It's good to have, you know, context, even if you, it isn't a very plot-heavy game you're playing, because it's it's important to feel motivated, because if you're just going through a random, you know, ran, a randomly designed series of cobblestone rooms, it's not really... It could be interesting, but it's not, like, interesting in the sense that you want like you're sort of, want to uncover the secrets of it. It's just a it's just a dungeon. Uh, f like for example, if you played a RuneScape during like in in like uh, 2010, they released the Dungeoneering update where you could go in dungeons, and the dungeons were all randomly generated, uh, just generic dungeons with no theme to them. And that's what you want to avoid if you're playing a proper role playing game like D and D or Pathfinder, and you want to pro like properly design a dungeon that has story and a narrative to it. Uh, something to keep in mind is that when you're putting monsters for the players to fight in the dungeon, uh, you want to sort of keep it consistent. Unless you're playing, like, you know, again, Dungeon of the Week kind of thing, you want to sort of have the monsters be consistent with the dungeon and its location. And what that means is if you have a dungeon that's, that's branded... Wait, 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 the context, if, if it's branded as a, a goblin hideout, you're, you probably, you, you might, you're, you're gonna find mostly goblins, maybe like some, uh, like some kobold mercenary or something, maybe like one or two sort of, you know, uh, like, like beetles or something that are like sort of pests, but that's about it, you should, you, if it's, if it's a standard sort of like, you know, low fantasy dungeon, there's not gonna be a whole lot of deviation from goblins, which, which is, which, you know, you can have a, it's okay to have, like, you know, a, maybe, like, you know, they're worshipping a, a demon at the, at the end. Like, there's a demon at the end. Maybe not a demon. Maybe, like, a, like, a dragon. Like, like a white dragon or a low-level dragon like that. But it's important to remember that you, in the world of D&D, you're not going to find spiders, goblins, and, like, wanty living together in harmony in this one dungeon waiting to be slaughtered by party members. They, they're gonna have their own interests. They're going to have their own, you know, sort of goals. And they're gonna live in separate places. They're not gonna live all together, unless like you have like some sort of weird, like a, uh, like some sort of embassy or something. But that's a whole other deviation. This is a, as a rule of thumb. But depending on what your game is, usually try to keep it consistent with monsters. Uh, diverse encounters. Speaking of speaking of monsters. You never want to build a dungeon where the only thing, the, your only challenge is fighting things. Fighting things is fun, and it's, 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 cr it's crucial to a dungeon, but that shouldn't be the only thing that's driving your players through, the only thing stopping your players. There should be, you know, traps, there should be puzzles, there should be maybe some role-play encounters. 
you know, logic, maybe na like navigating the dungeon, that should be its own challenge. You want to you want to keep it diverse and fresh for your players because if it's just fight after fight after fight and then the main boss and you you, you get the, the loot and then you leave, it's it doesn't really it feels like you know it's the same as it would be if you were like out in the forest you know slaughtering things as, like as, as you go on. You want to have like sort of may, like maybe like you know that there's a, a key code that you have to like you have to like arrange the dials in a certain way to enter the the, the, the crypts of where like you know the, the senators were buried. Or maybe, you know, you have to uh, disarm a trap like the walls are closing in on you in, like, you know, the, the, wizard, the wizard's uh, storage room for his uh, encha enchanted items. Like, the walls are closing in on you, and you have to find a way to disable the, the walls and, like, you know, cast spells and, like, d disarm, like, gears and things. Be creative with it. You want to definitely have, like, as you would be creative with a combat encounter... The non-combat encounters are are incredibly important, and you want to be creative with them as you, as you can. Same with like role playing. Maybe like you know, there's a sphinx in the way, and you have to negotiate with the sphinx and like ask him for passage. Or maybe you have like you know, in a I forget what it's from. Like you know, like the the thing where there are there are three monsters, and they're each standing in front of their own door, and they're trying to convince you which one of them, which one of the doors is actually correct. And they're both lying to you. And then, like, in, in, in Labyrinth, they get in Labyrinth, and, like, they're saying the other one's lying, and one that's telling the truth, but they're both lying to each other. It's things like that to sort of, you know, make them stop, like, look up from, you know, like, the, their stats, and start to and use their heads. Like, wait a minute, who's who's lying? Who's telling the truth? You want to equally be using, you know, the stats and the numbers, as well as the player's brains. Because that, you know, it makes the, the dungeon more fun, and more interesting, and more memorable. Like... Your party is more likely to remember the time when they had to, you know, tra they, had to, they had to translate the dead dwarven dialect than the time they fought a few, uh, like, a few high-level wanti. Just keep that in mind. Uh, party, party-based dungeons. You should build your dungeons, uh, to fit the needs of your party. I mean, obviously this entails, you know, lower-level monsters for lower-level party members, but it also means, like, you know, if, if... There's no rogue in the party, you know, if that ever happens, which it probably won't. But if there's no rogue in the party, don't put, you know, a million traps and locked doors. If there's no wizard, don't put any sort of magic-based traps. If there's no, if there's no, you know, like, you know, heavy brutish fighter, maybe don't put a ton of heavy brutish enemies. Just don't make it, you know, the main drive when you're designing your dungeon, but make it, keep it in the back of your head, because... You don't want to, like, have to find a way to bail the party out if they're behind a locked door and there's no one to pick the lock. Or if, like, they have, they have to hit a target, like, a target 100 meters away to open the next door, but there's no ranger in your party. Something else important to remember is that your party can't be overwhelmed or underwhelmed by monsters. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to work. If you have... If, say, two people are gone this session, in a, in a party of five, and you, and you give them the normal amount of, of, uh, of enemies, they're going to be killed, all of them, because they can't fend off that many enemies on their own. Or if, or if, or if you had, uh, if you have new members joining the, par joining the session, or joining the, the group for that session, and there's the same amount of uh, enemies, they're going to... It's going to be a cakewalk for them. They're just going to go out, out onto the end, get the loot, and leave. You have to balance it. See, another thing that I like about the 4th edition Dun uh, Dungeon Master Guide is that it has rules for, like, a point-buy system. You get points at, like, you get points out of the level of the party, and you spend these points on, like, different monsters to create a balanced encounter. And it's quite a good system, actually. I, I use it a lot when I'm designing my games, and even when I don't, I, I, I sort of, you know, keep that keep the point system in mind. Uh, and as we all know, the end of every dungeon has the boss fight, and the boss has to be interesting. It can't just be a generic white dragon. The boss should always be challenging. Always, the party should never easily destroy a boss, no matter if they're low level, like like first level, or if they're like or if they're, if they're like twentieth level. You should always definitely have a, ba a boss that's balanced, but also powerful. Uh, 
the boss should be an interesting character that is may maybe that the character is hyped up or maybe you just met him, but the character should be interesting. Like you can just have you know a a a, a young green dragon fight it. You have to have, you know, this is this is the 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 green dragon Saragoth, and Saragoth has escaped his home his uh his home colony to set up his own base here in the in the civilized world. And he's been uh, uh, stopping, he's been stopping, uh, you know, caravans that they go by, and bring the loot in for himself. And he's planning to attack with his forces of cobalt on the nearby town. Or maybe you know, it's a wizard who is uh, stockpiling alchemical ingredients to create, you know, a, a deadly chemical weapon that will that will in instantly kill everybody in the in the capital city. Uh, and you know the wizard, he'll he'll fling bottles of uh, of poison or bottles of acid at your party as like you're fighting him. And who says there has to be just one boss? You could have, you know, a a less tough boss halfway through the dungeon, or you could even have two bo two bosses, three bosses, more in in the same encounter. That will be interesting. I would actually I've never tried that. That would be really, really cool to see. Uh, and the boss should definitely. Uh, give good loot when you complete the dungeon and you cleared it out and all the encounters are done. You should have a worthwhile reward that isn't going to disappoint anybody. Keep in mind the party are likely at, in the dungeon because they were assigned a quest to go to the dungeon. So don't be too generous with what's in the dungeon for loot because they're going to get the reward from whoever assigned it to them. But loot is often done wrong. You can't just have a pile of gold. I think I've mentioned this before. But you shouldn't just give them a pile of gold and that's it. You should have, you know, gems, art pieces, uh, co cool magical weapons, magical items, you know, just ra random uh, uh, things. Maybe, maybe you know, a deed, a deed to property, a deed to the dungeon. Uh, maybe a prisoner. A prisoner, like, you know, the, the, the queen's daughter has been kidnapped by this person and you need to, you need to find, you found them because she was, she was assumed dead long ago. And she's fully grown now. Maybe, maybe you find a letter from the or f to, f to the main boss from a bigger bad guy that sort of is a clue in your story. It was at this point when I ran out of uh, storage on my camera, so let's just cut right to the ending, shall we? That's it for me. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, remember, I will definitely do any kind of uh, any kind of video that you request for me. I, I'll, I can do a video on any topic that you want to. Just send me, leave a comment, send me an email, whatever you want to do. And yeah, that's about it uh, on dungeon design. I'll, I might do another video on this, and be stay tuned for my fan expo video. Goodbye.